I'm here with many laptops, as you can see in front of me, and I'm gonna be testing out Flight Simulator on them. Yes, it's Flight Simulator again. It's been maybe two weeks, so we're doing it again. Listen, it was an expensive game. I'm gonna run it to its to its death, to its course. Um, and I feel like maybe this is probably the last video I will do with it, just because I actually don't know what else to do at this point. But I have nearly all of Predator's laptops here with me today, and we're gonna be testing them out to see if they can run Flight Simulator and if they can run it well. I say this as Flight Simulator was a, a pretty demanding game, arguably one of the most demanding games of the year. No, that's not an argument. It definitely was one of the most demanding games of the year. Was it the crisis of the year? No, I feel like crisis was the crisis of the year, but definitely was a demanding game for your CPU, for your GPU, especially in ultra settings, and for your RAM, just say goodbye to your RAM because it will use absolutely every ounce of it. And you can see that from the specifications that it asks for. For the minimum specifications and recommended specifications, they're generally, they're like, you know, they're okay, but really this is the kind of game that you want to be running at its, at its finest. You don't want to be running it in the lowest of settings. It's ideal specifications they ask for is a 9th gen Intel Core i7 and an RTX 2080 graphics card. So just like the third best NVIDIA graphics card at the time when it came out. Not that much, right? <laughs> it's pretty eye-watering and they are PC specifications. I have laptops here with me, so we're going to be seeing how well they run on laptops. We are going to be running it in the lowest settings, we're going to be running it in medium settings, high settings and ultra settings as well and we're going to be running it in the screen's native 1080p just to see how many frames per second we can get. I have here Predator's Finest starting off with the Nitro 5 which is not a Predator laptop. I, I know, I'll get there but it is a Nitro 5, this is Ace's gaming laptop and this is going to be our budget kind of warrior for this for this testing, we have here the Triton 300, we have here the Triton 500, we have the Helios 300, and we have the Helios 700, and they're all stacked pretty precariously here. I do want to take them down as quickly as possible. I just thought it would look cool, okay? I just thought it would look good. Uh, we're going to be testing them all out today. Now, just a disclaimer, if you've come here from the Warzone video, which is the one I did like this last, or if you've never played a flight simulator game in general, then let's all let's all take a second and manage our expectations a little bit. <laughs> because if you come in here from Warzone where I was like, high frames per second is best, like just lower your settings and have high frames per second, this isn't that kind of game. This is the kind of game where really you're gonna get the best uh, the best visual experience and the best gameplay experience playing it in higher settings and dropping your frame rate down a little bit and the frames you're going to be getting from this they're not going to be they're not going to be in the hundreds so if you're thinking that then um, sorry it's not <laughs> 60 frames per second would be perfect does it does it get to that not often <laughs> over 30 frames per second is great um, and that's really like that's what you're looking for over 30 frames per second it's absolutely great and that is fine it, it's a flight simulator there's not that much happening. No! It's going pretty slowly. Yeah, bonk. The same thing you would see out of an aeroplane window is kind of what you're gonna be seeing here. Oh, well, that's, oof. I might be stuck. It's not like a first person shooter where you need your like really high frame rates to see all the action, to see that little guy like in the corner to get in before anyone else does. It's not like that. So over 30 frames per second is great. Even over 15, 10 frames per second is playable. Uh, I have pretty I have pretty low standards. I would say probably over 15 frames per second is playable and that's fine. But I will be doing, I will be showing the gameplay as it's going on so you can decide whether it's playable enough for you or not. So let's start off with the cheapest laptop on our list, and that is Asus Nitro 5. Uh, and the cheapest configuration for this starts at just £629, which is, it, it's actually the most, it's the cheapest gaming laptop you can find, I, I believe, at Curry. So that's that's definitely something, and it performs so well. What I have is slightly, a little bit of an upgrade above that. So this one retails for £850, and it has an i5 10300H processor, and NVIDIA's GTX 1650 Ti graphics card. Now, can it run Flight Simulator? Yes, it can. So I'm starting off running it in low settings and this is, I'm, I'm flying over Tokyo, I believe. And to be honest, if I wanted to make this a really fair test, I would just fly around the same area in all the different settings and all the different laptops. However, that's pretty boring and I, and I didn't do that. And, I actually kind of forgot to do that. So <laughs> it will vary. The, the setting, the scenario where you're flying will definitely have an impact on the frame rate. Say if you're flying in a city, the frame rate's gonna be lower. 
uh, if you're flying down low, if there's like some crazy weather going on and but yeah, there are some, definitely some other factors that play into your game's frame rate. So bear that in mind. I am flying in it. I'm flying in quite a quite a busy city, and I'm flying fairly low down. So I did try and keep the weather the same. That's the one thing I did. I did try and keep the same, not purposefully. I just sort of forgot about it and just left it there as like as a clear day, <laughs> just to help me with my flying as well. You know, um, low settings <laughs> in a city, it doesn't look great. It's not my favourite thing. It's kind of just like a grey expanse, isn't it, with some with some other grey blobs and then some really <laughs> <laughs> just choice buildings that are really detailed um, which is which is quite funny to me <laughs> but yeah so this is Tokyo in low settings and I was kind of averaging here around it depends I so I started averaging around 45 frames per second it dropped a little bit but I would say it did average around like 40 45 frames per second very smooth very playable um, but in medium settings I was averaging around let me have a look at this yeah I was averaging around 25 30 frames per second I've just why did I have to fast forward to the point in which I crashed into a building. We're gonna forget about that. Um, but it was around like 30 frames per second. So again, also really nice and uh, really playable. And the difference in between medium settings and low is a lot. <laughs> it goes from just like gray blobs to um, not fairly aesthetic looking buildings. However, they are buildings now. You can definitely recognize them as buildings and they have their own different shapes. Medium is actually kind of like a great, uh, that's kind of a sweet spot, isn't it? Here, I was averaging around like 20, 25 frames per second here. 25, yeah. I was kind of sitting around 25 and it all looks pretty good. And then in ultra settings, <laughs> so <laughs> nervous laughter. Um, so it dropped, <laughs> it dropped pretty heavily in the beginning, uh, just when I just changed it to ultra settings. But then it does even itself out. And again, you've got to like, you've got to think about the fact that I'm in a city, I'm flying a lot lower here. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think ultra settings on this laptop would be fine if I was flying in the countryside and for us flying somewhere a little bit more rural or a little bit higher up. Um, but here in the city, I would have probably dropped it down to probably to high settings. But yeah, for a smoother gameplay, you need like, you, I, I think I think above 20 just makes it a little, much smoother. The, above 20 is where it makes the difference. So yeah, I think for the Nitro 5, I would have kept it on medium to high settings, medium to high. Ultra sometimes, but otherwise medium to high. Now let's move on to arguably, probably, most likely Predator's best laptop ever in terms of gaming performance versus money, the Helios 300. This is a dream to play on. So um, this one right here is running an i7-9750H processor and an RTX 2060 graphics card. This current model isn't on the market anymore just because it is an older processor. So the one on the market at the moment is the i7-10750H. So basically the same, just updated a little bit. And that one's on the market for, I think, £1,500. But one of the great things about the Helios 300 is A, that it's really, really well priced, but also B, that I often see it go on with offers on like Amazon, Curry's, whatever, e even on the Acer store as well for like 100, 200 pounds off. So, I mean, if it wasn't already good enough, it is absolutely perfect when you like have a little bit of um, savings. But yeah, 50, 55 frames per second in low settings. Um, going into medium settings, we're kind of getting here um, around 40. Okay, like a good 40 frames per second. Yeah. And I didn't try to... Oh, I keep... <laughs> I only ever seem to go to the bit where I crash and I'm like, well, great. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me how bad I am. So yeah, 35 frames per second here. Pretty good. And then in ultra settings, you know, it's... It's nice, it's nice in ultra settings. This is definitely um, a laptop where you could have it on ultra settings um, if you didn't. Or high, I don't know, it depends what how many frames per second you want, but you can definitely play this one in ultra settings. This gave me around, uh, am I on? Yeah, this gave me around like 25 frames per second, so pretty good. And then, so now as we're into the Predator devices, these are overclockable. So this one has an overclockable GPU, so you can overclock the RTX 2060. And I did have a play around with that. So I kept it on ultra settings. I overclocked it to the fast setting. There are two different settings, fast and boosted. So in the fast setting, um, I would say I went from averaging, if before it was like 25, this was honestly not like, not a great difference, but I would say it's around like 27 in fast, but you know, less than 10% of a boost in frames per second. That's all right. That's actually, that, that's fine. And then I changed it to boosted. So I will say in fast, it seemed pretty steady. It stayed around like the 26, 27, 28 mark. And then it boosted, it kind of shot up quite often to 30 frames per second, then back down. So I would say like on average, it was like 28 frames per second. 
Um, the fans do go on a little bit louder when the overclocking is on, but with your headset on, you're not really going to notice it. But I think overclocking will really play more of a part when you had other things running on the laptop as well. I think that's where it would really help you out. Or if your frames per second were like dangerously low, I think it would really help you out then. But as it was doing pretty well anyway, just a little bit of a boost, just a little bit, just a few extra frames per second. What more do you need? It was just nice and smooth. So yeah, very impressed with the old Helios 300. So I'm fully aware I just ranted and raved about how the Helios 300 was the best value for money and there was nothing else and you could fight me if you thought differently. Well, prepare to watch me eat my words because <laughs> here is the Triton 300 and actually it might be better. Hmm. <laughs> I, I assume the Triton 300 was a little bit more expensive and that's why I thought the Helios 300 was better value for money, but actually, uh, it's not. It's actually valued at the same price and the GPU is slightly better. So. The Triton 300 is Predator's unsung hero. It does not get nearly as much attention as it deserves, as I have just horribly proven. <laughs> I'm, that is so rude of me, I'm so sorry. So, the Triton 300 that I have in front of me uh, is running an i7-10750H processor, the same as the Helios 300, but the GPU is a slight upgrade. We now have an RTX 2070 as opposed to a 2060, and they both retail for the same price. Okay, so this is low, this is in the low settings, you can see the mountains. The mountains don't look so bad. They're kind of, they're just, they're a little bit patchy. They're, they're not really blended, but it's okay. <laughs> it's not the worst. So I would say here, like we've got about, what was that? Around like 50, 50 frames per second, over 50, over 50 frames per second. In medium settings, I'd say is averaging around 45, 45 frames per second. That's good, that's some good stuff. Okay, so we're in high settings now and it's averaging around 35 frames per second. So now we're in ultra settings, I'd say we're averaging around 30 frames per second. It's pretty steady as well. Mountains do look nice. And the clouds as well. The clouds and the lighting really make a difference as you go into the higher settings. And as you go into the higher settings, as you go into the high and ultra settings, it's going to work your GPU quite a bit more. This is me, you know, like panning the camera around to show you like, you know, how smooth it is, but also it's me trying to find where the freaking airport is. Oh no. <laughs> oh, okay, you know what, I'm just gonna stop the video here. I do feel like with the overclocking, it's a lot, it's, it's quite steady. The frame rate stays steadier than it does without it. A solid 30, not a nice round 30 with the overclocking, fast and boosted. So this guy right here is my baby. I realize I can't say that about every single laptop that I come across, but this one is my personal laptop. This is the Triton 500. And I've been using this solidly for about a year and a half now. Uh, so the specs on this one are a bit older than the rest. This one is an i7-8750H processor, so 8th generation, um, with an RTX 2080 card. So, uh, a little bit older in terms of processors, but a year and a half is like nothing. You can't really call that old for a laptop, I'm sorry. This has been a solid performer. I have confidence with this. Every game I throw at it, it's just going to be fine. And I can actually take it around with me quite pretty comfortably. Like, I feel happy travelling around with this because it's like two kilos, it's fine, it's not that bad. Why did I choose different locations for all of them? I was like, oh, I want to spice it up. Um, so we're in low settings at the moment. As you can tell by the edges next to the sea, that is, hmm, that is sharp, that is crunchy. <laughs> so in low settings, this is giving me around 80 frames per second here. Okay, this is giving me around like 65 frames per second, I would say. It, it varies quite a bit, but I'd say around 65 frames per second in medium settings. I wish I went to a city. Oh. So we are now in high settings, and I'd say it's giving us around like 55, somewhere in between 50 and 55 frames per second, which is a really good amount. What a performer. You are an absolute champ, aren't you? Around 35, over 35, over mm, 36, 35, 36 sort of frames per second in ultra settings, which is really nice. That's smooth, that is, that is smooth. So we've had the beauty, the Triton 500, and now let's have the beast, the Helios 700. It absolutely just dwarfs me, doesn't it? Look how massive it is. Can we, can you not, sir? It is a beast. It is the best thing ever. That is the only way I can describe it. Now that I'm at home, I'm not really, I'm not moving around. I don't need a laptop for laptopy things. 
this is this is the best because <laughs> I'm not I'm not taking it with me anywhere. It stays there. It is so powerful. It is essentially a PC. But if I do have to move around in the future, like if I have to take it with me somewhere, I know that I could. You can keep it on your lap even. I've said before I wouldn't recommend keeping it on your lap, but actually it's like five kilos. Same as my cat. The specs, get ready. So for our processor, we have an i9 10980HK processor. Lord have mercy. And for our GPU, we have an RTX 2080 Super. Just, 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 just so, just so overpowered. Not even overpowered, powered. Just powered, just, just damn powered. Over a hundred frames per second. <laughs> and you know what? While I'm here over the sea, it doesn't look, doesn't look like it's that low settings. When I see those big islands, that kind of looks like garbage, but the sea looks nice, the lighting, the clouds are, the clouds are okay. The clouds aren't great, but over 100 frames per second in flight simulator. It has been achieved. <laughs> okay. The islands already look a lot better. And the clouds, the clouds look softer. It's like 90. That is, it's, okay, it's ranging from like 90 to 100, like 95. High rendering, high settings, high quality, high quality. It is very high quality. This is like over 70 frames per second we're getting. This is nice. I'm not even trying to land, am I? This is supposed to be a landing challenge. I've got no chance. Yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a beast. This is like 45 frames per second. Very nice in ultra settings. Very nice, very nice. Sunset is the best time to play. Sunset, sunrise as well. Before with the other Paracel laptops, they have two different overclocking speeds, fast and boosted. With the Helios 700, it has three different overclocking speeds. It is fast, boosted, and extreme. So that wraps up the laptops we have with us today. Can they run Flight Simulator though? In short, yes, they can. And some of them, some of them really knock it out of the park. So it, let, let's wrap it up like this. For ultra settings, it goes all the way from 15 frames per second, for which you're paying around 850 pounds for the device, all the way up to 60 frames per second in ultra settings, for which obviously you're paying a little bit more. Helio 700, around 2,000, 2,500 pounds. GB Sterling, yes. <laughs> but as you, you can see as we went up, so the way I've ordered the video is from Nitro 5, which is our lowest specifications and lowest price, all the way up to our top specifications and top price. You can see the difference there. And there's some, there's some really good performers. The Helios 300, Triton 300, really great performer. And the Helios 700, even just keeping overclocking on the fast setting, it just, it did the job. And it gave us like an extra, extra what, like 10, 15 frames per second? 10, 10 frames per second? That's awesome. Anyway, let me know what you think down below. Uh, let me know what if you'd like to see another game like this, testing our different games on different laptops, because I like doing it. Do you know what I hate? Deleting, like making room on the laptops and then downloading the game, especially when it's Flight Simulator. It's like 100 gigabytes. It's basically Warzone. The only two games I've done this with are Warzone and Flight Simulator. So but yeah, let me know down below which one you'd like, because that means I get to keep the laptops out for a bit more and just keep gaming on them. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.